is the man who raises the bar, who raises the stats, who takes things to stratospheric levels. And he's only got three corners now. He can see the crowd standing and giving him that round of applause. He is ready to kickstart the celebrations. Eight times we've said it before. Here's a night for you. Lewis Hamilton wins the British Grand Prix. What a victory. Hamilton is back. Oh, mate, I have been waiting for this. Jeez. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. It means a lot. It means a lot to get this one. A big thank you to all the fans here. Love you guys. Hello and welcome to Slow Pit Stop, the international Formula One podcast by fans for fans all around the world. My name's Arafat, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Mohammed. Say hi, Mohammed. Yeah, Lewis Hamilton! Okay, I'm putting my volume down. How are you? Excited, apparently. Yeah, I'm ready for this episode. I'm so happy for this episode. Great. Let's go. Let's do it. So we're here to obviously talk about Lewis Hamilton, seven-time world champion, eight-time constructors champion, and nine times winner at the British Grand Prix. We've got a big episode today with lots of different guests, some new, some old. Um, should we say hello to everyone? Yeah. Everyone introduce uh, yourselves. So, <laughs> everyone introduce us. So obviously we have Adam, who's here uh, representing Red Bull, sadly. Um, it's a goat rodeo. Hi, Adam, how are you? <laughs> yeah. Great. Joining um, you from rainy Scotland. Rainy Scotland. Joining us from Manchester, we have Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Hi, I am a self-proclaimed Lewis Hamilton fan, um, and I'm very happy to be here. And also joining us for the first time, we have Abdi. Abdi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Um, should we ask the important questions first then? What podcast snacks does everybody have? I have some Asda Smart Price milk chocolate. I'm able to brandish UK beans. traits for a change because here I am with you, Arafat. Sort of. Excellent. I've got water. And since we're going to talk about snacks, I've got melatonin gummies for after this ra- This is done. I just Sandy, do you have any snacks? No, I'm on a wedding diet, unfortunately, so no snacks for me. Oh, congratulations. Oh, sad. I'd pick snacks over over <laughs> all of that. Anyway, let's just get straight into it. We normally do the news and all of these things. We're going to do an upside down backwards episode. We have uh, people here that have attended the race itself. Sonia, let's start with you. Was this your first ever Grand Prix? She's on mute. There you go. I think it's working now. Uh, yes, first ever Grand Prix, and can I just say, possibly the most epic one that I will ever have the pleasure of attending, if I'm able to attend more in the future, of course. But yeah, first ever. Wedding diet permitting. Yes, um, and medical rota permitting. But yeah. Wait, hold on. So were, you were a Lewis fan before you went, I'm guessing? Yeah, yes. And your yeah. first race you went to is the one he won? That's incredible. You need to go to every race from now on. That's I amazing. I think I'm his personal good luck charm. So you definitely are. Yeah. Every time I attend a race, Lewis loses. Yeah, that's why he doesn't go to them anymore. I don't go anymore. <laughs> I'll wait until he retires and then I'll, I'll start going again. It was honestly, um, though, I think it surpassed every expectation I had. Like, I knew it was going to be a great weekend, regardless of the result. But I think there were so many factors apart from the obvious that just made it the most epic four days I think I'll ever have. So here's a question for you. When I went to Silverstone for my first ever race, Hmm. the first Formula One car I ever saw live in real life was a Virgin racing car uh, with Lucas Degrassi driving. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then off he went. And then Michael Schumacher pulled out of the pits in the silver Mercedes with his red helmet. And I was sat at cops opposite when that was a start finish and i was just like oh my god this is like such a special moment and that's like stuck with me forever seeing michael schumacher for the first time what was the first f1 car you saw live so the first car that i thought was actually back in i think 2013 or 14 um and it was actually a mclaren car so it's been a long time on the track no so that was like the no 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 but but, but the obviously. question is on track because it's it's on magical track. when you see it on track it's like the I noise the all of that i think the first car that i saw was the historic f1 car going round oh okay so when oh, I, saw oh. that, 
I was like, that is pretty incredible. You could you could see obviously when you see the the newer cars now, you see the complete progression and that development over the years. But I think when you see the vintage cars going around, you're already very pumped and you get very excited. And then when I saw, I think I actually saw they were filming for um, the new F1 film, and I saw mm. the Brad Pitt's car go around first. <laughs> so it was a little bit like this is pretty cool, but I was like. I'm even more excited now to see every other time. <laughs> so every listen, other. when somebody asks you this in the future, Sonia, I want you to tell them that the first F1 car you saw on track was an Apex GP driven by Brad Pitt. Yeah. And just confuse the heck out of them. Um, right. So that must Adam. have been the Williams, right? That was the historic car. I think Jensen took his Williams for a tour. Oh, did he? That's the handsome really cool man Brad Jensen. wishes he was. Yeah, it was oh, Jensen. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That was um, awesome. Adam, you were sat at Cops as well. What was your experience of this race like? We were both at Cops? No, I was at Club. Okay. okay. I was at Cops when I went. Got it. <laughs> yeah, no, Cops, Cops was amazing. So first of all, I got rained on a trillion times. So that's going to be the story there. And so I definitely got a cold. It was totally worth it. But man, like somehow it managed to angle its way into the grandstand every time too. Good thing hugging your mom is a theme of the podcast because my mom has passed by the screen like five times now. Yeah. So, welcome <laughs> to YouTube. Um, yeah, so then <laughs> there she goes again. And then so that was cool. But then I guess the crazy thing about being a cops in terms of unique experiences is I saw Checo uh, end up in the gravel on his, uh, his Q1. And then mm. I saw Max go off and recover at that same, essentially same spot. So I was um, surrounded by Englishmen. And so mm-hmm. there's just, I was basically all papaya, a little, little bit of Aston gear. The person yeah. right next to me yeah, was a half English, happened? half French woman who loved, uh, who loves Logan Sargent specifically. <laughs> Riddle me that one. I saw, I like looked to my side and I saw her WhatsApping like 20 Eagle emojis into her phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> for the group chat. Why are you being nosy at people's phones? Uh, it's impossible to not notice. Everybody's always holding up, taking mm. the videos, putting, adding it to their story, including Fair me, enough. obviously. I was sent you guys a billion videos while I was there. But yeah, I mean, there was a there was an old sea dog. It looked like he was probably about 50 or so, so maybe not that old, but, the, you know, for the grandstands. And he was like, I bend it, Checo! And I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Everyone part? was taking <laughs> such delight. Yes. Oh, he was a... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was a sea dog. Like, for real, for real. And, um... Yeah, it was funny, because then I, I talked with some colleagues after one of them had just been in Austria. So he's like, yeah, well, how do you think I felt last week? <laughs> mm-hmm. So fair, fair yeah. enough. Excellent. And Abdi, uh, well, although Lewis Hamilton is the most winning driver of all time... I think since you've started following Formula One, this is the first time you've ever seen him win. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever seen him win a race. What did that feel like? As yeah, it, what did... it was like it was. I ran outside and I ran across the entire neighborhood twice, <laughs> and then I came back, drank water, and then ran again. But then I came back. Nice. Because, yeah. And uh, And... Abdi makes these YouTube edits on his (laughs) channel, um, like motorsport themed, and they get thousands of of views. Uh, So that's his his claim to fame because we've all got something we bring to the table. That's what he brings to the table. Abdi, like out of all of us, you're the only one that's still at school. I know Formula One's growing in popularity in America. Do do your friends at school talk about it? Did they care that Lewis had won or were they like, what are you talking about? Uh, Yes. Uh, As soon as, so my friend, he's not a huge fan. But like he he got notifications and as soon as he won he started texting me and uh, but he I got it I got it like pretty early because I was watching it on the F1 app so uh, but he got somehow got that Lewis won before me and I got spoiled by like one <laughs> by like one turn uh, at least he didn't like crash out and lose I mean yeah. that was, oh I was spoiling be... everything <laughs> over you guys the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, he was like 30 seconds ahead of us because he was live there. So he was just texting us being like, it's raining now. And I was like, it's going to rain you soon. I want to know. I just kept saying the order. No, no, I did. Coming I did. Oh, no. I, I actually Because it was an my... awesome race. Like, what was the deal with that? You were looking at it and I was sending them. I'm like, Russ, Ham, Pia, Amir, or, or Nor. And then like, wait a second. No, Norris is here now. 
no, wait a second. Hamilton's overtaking yeah. George. Like, it's constant updates. Yastri chasing Norris for the lead at one point. And you know, anyway, yeah. we'll get there, I'm sure. But it was totally awesome. Yeah. What um, a dynamic so, sorry, race. Adam, I, didn't, like... I didn't see a single text. I could not breathe or, or like, look at or see or anything. I was completely, like, on the verge of a collapse. So my phone was... I wasn't reading your text. No, but hey, I when signs so started to creep up to the back of Max, I, I started to derealize as well. It was not a good scene. <laughs> so, speaking of signs, uh, somebody here got to meet him. Me? Whoa. Tell us about that. So, we um, we did a pit walk on Thursday, um, Thursday evening, which was really cool. We Can I just mention, before I saw signs, I saw Lewis. Wow, like, what? Lewis. You gotta lead with that. <laughs> what? So, it was... There was, I'm, I'm five feet tall. I don't fare well in crowds at all. I do not like standing behind people because I get very strange views of people (laughs) and I don't think that's acceptable. But I do get sort of certain windows sometimes where I get to see exactly what's happening, um, which other people might miss. Lewis had just finished his um, Sky Sports interview um, on the track and all the all the drivers walking back um and there was just this commotion and I was like it's him I know it's him there can only be one person that people are screaming so loudly for and then you just heard it it was like in slow motion it's like Lewis it's Lewis and I just got the most incredible glimpse of him my heart stopped my mouth was dry my hands were shaking and he was so far away and it was only like a tenth of a second that I saw him but it was enough for me and wow. I knew at that point I was like, it's going to be a great weekend. I can wow, that's it. awesome. That's so good. Um, but yeah, after you don't have that, to worry we... much, as much about these rear views with these guys because they're se- seldom six feet. So you should just <laughs> oh, walk right right. We then managed to walk down the pits. We saw into the the garages, saw the cars. Very cool. And then I was buzzing at that point, um, just seeing it so up close and personal. And then. Mr. Signs just decides to cycle past in his Lycra in wow. all his glory. And again, he was just there and it all happened very quickly. And he was like, I'm really sorry, guys. I've got to go in like the most beautiful Spanish accent ever. <laughs> um, and I was like, you are not leaving. In my head, I said this, obviously I couldn't say this to him. Um, but I was like, you're not leaving without me getting a selfie of my face next to your face. Um, I just whipped my camera out as quickly as I could. I don't think I moved so quickly, but also felt like everything was in slow motion again. Um, and then, yeah, it was just very cool. Very Wait, so you got fun. the picture? Yeah. It's oh, wow. awful. It's awful, but I will cherish it until the day that I die. <laughs> I need uh, Adam to give me his best impression of Carlos Sainz saying, I'm sorry, guys, I, I have to go. What, what, what did he tell you? No, give, give her rheumatology advice as Carlos Sainz. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, when uh, someone is having a fibromyalgia storm, you have to take them very seriously. What what speciality would Checo you, be? You have to start by validating their pain. What speciality would Checo be? I also went with like the most controversial because I brought up fibromyalgia when I didn't need to. Um, <laughs> Checo, we, I think we just we were like really torn on our podcast where we did that, right? We were going to go with diagnostic radiology or PATH, but I feel like it's he's yeah. getting more PATH by the week, guys. <laughs> Those yeah. those slides are not ready. They'll be ready when they're ready. He's two laps down, okay? The, the, it's, and it's the lab tech's fault because it's always we didn't do the setup right. Not I. <laughs> we had an issue on the car. And we've triggered Adam with Checo talk. Let's let's uh, reel it back. Our we'll, we'll keep we'll keep it. I want him to like bottle it all up until we get to that bit. <laughs> yeah. But um last thing I wanted to talk about before we got into the race. Um Sonia, you got to watch the England penalties with Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. What was that like? Oh, wow. Honestly, a sentence I never thought I'd say. The weekend just got, it was just giving and giving and giving. So yeah, Saturday, um, the sun came out, which is a whole story within itself. It was glorious, blue skies. England were through to the penalties. They had it up on the main stage. And yeah, George walked out during half time, and then he sat with us and watched most of the second half and then penalties so they decided to bring Lewis out just as Cole Palmer was about to take his penalty he was met with boos because Ariana Bravo who was presenting on the stage she was like guys it's the Formula One this is not a football match and everyone was like honestly lady we want to watch the football this is not the time yeah people booing people like we love Lewis but this is not the time to bring him out 
They booed Lewis or Ariana Bravo? Well, they booed Ariana Bravo, but oh. Lewis. Oh, for bringing them out during the, while the football was on. Yeah. So wow. Okay. I used to listen to her podcast every week in 2021. I feel very bad for her. She's Ariana, a, she's a good journalist. That's yeah. interesting. Didn't know she had one. Auto sport. It was auto sport. I think she just she just read the crowd wrong um, ah. at that moment. Lewis kind of took it under his wing. He was like, "Do you know what? I'm going to sit down with George. We're going to watch the penalties together." And it was just brilliant. Um, it was special. I mean, I love football as well um i'm really backing england but that was just really special so i got a good feeling for england because lewis has blessed blessed us by watching the penalties with us i saw half of that my my bus didn't allow me to catch it all before i had to go wow. i clearly need to spring for paddock club next time because my selfie was yeah. with with matt gallagher and and uh tom tom bellingham from <laughs> p1 <laughs> that's incredible but i'm very happy about itself. that yeah. yeah it was awesome yeah. Wait, they were clearly a getting sick and Sorry. cold. They were standing in the rain, so they didn't have a lot of time for me. Maybe you should never meet your heroes, but I still really <laughs> enjoyed it. Sonia, did you buy Paddock Club access, or did you do the like? No. How did you get the? So how did you get onto the pit walk on Thursday? So we bought the pit walk as part oh. of the four day ticket. Yeah, but we didn't get like. Oh, that's really access. cool. That's I gotta really do that. Cool. That's definitely on my list now. Yeah. It was worth it. I think, I mean, I received this entire weekend as a gift, um, which is a very generous gift. But um, if I was, if I was buying it for myself, I think I'd definitely do the pit walk again. Would recommend. Uh, uh, shout out the biologic therapy that got you the tickets. Give them there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, speaking of things on your list, I think you've got a game for us before we get into I do, rest. but... Um... Did you want to play? We I think we had some of our friends put together a video. Would you like? Do you want to still play that? We'll do it at the end. We'll do it as our exit as our from closing the episode. Thing? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So I do have a game for everyone to play. Uh, it's a Lewis Hamilton trivia game. As the theme of this episode is Lewis Hamilton, greatest driver of all time. Uh, woohoo! Let's go, Lewis. Um, so there's four uh, pieces of trivia, and uh, there's four of you guys, which is works out really nicely. And it won't be, you don't have to compete against each other. You guys can work together to sort of answer each question. Um, and so we've know, we know that Lewis Hamilton has, you know, the number one record that he got this week is he extends his, his uh, record of how many wins he's had at a single circuit, which is nine now at Silverstone. And here, here's a little pre uh game or pre trivia trivia question what is the other track where he could get that record at even this year okay arafat yes arafat. hungary yes correct so hungary is the other one he could do that at but that was one I'm record to win <laughs> that's one record that he he got at this um with this win there were a total of five records can we name the other four records uh oldest driver to win a race on the grid that's good. Is there ones he oh, already has won or can win? Just records that records that he got with this victory. There's five of them. So, so first person to get 199 win. podiums. Yeah. Oh, first yeah. person to win in 18 different seasons. Okay, that's not what I'm thinking of. There's some other ones, but I guess that's technically correct. 104. When, um, yes, he extends oh. his win record. Oh, he was the first ones. one to uh, win after 300 races. Okay, there you go. That's a good one. Adam Adam picked up. That's number three. There's two others. First person to win uh, 17 years after their first win or something. That's it. Yep. He has the longest winningest record because it's 17 years. And uh, there's one more. First person to hug both their mom and their dad on, <laughs> in the pit lane. Yeah. Why do uh, most people only bring one parent? What's that about? <laughs> yeah, what is that about? They don't even necessarily get along and he still did it. That rules. Yeah. <laughs> so the last one, which I guess is not a new record, but he extends his le record of uh, most podiums at a single uh, circuit. And this was 15, which I didn't realize that he's been on the podium since 2007, uh, which is quite incredible. Um, or not since 2007, since, I don't know, 15 years ago, 2011. 2010 which is very incredible including 2021 uh 2022 and and three which i really thought i forgot that he was on the podium both of those years so um yeah. he extends that so that that was our first little uh trivia question so i think i'll, I'll give a point to arafat 
Pointa Abdi gets one, and Adam gets one. Um, I think Sonia got one too. So you guys all start off with with one point. Um, and I've tried to keep these questions sort of varied throughout uh, various eras of his of his career because that spans for so long. It picks up on on different times of Formula One history. So my next question is this. Uh, Lewis Hamilton has the current record for most consecutive race starts. Um, his first race being the 2007 Australian Grand Prix. Where was the last race where this record of his finally ended? Consecutive race starts. So it's three, four, four race starts, but he raced two, six, five until he got COVID. So he didn't come to Bahrain. So what was before Bahrain? Because that's where the record would have ended. At 265, right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. I don't know. Adam, like what was before Bahrain? Right? That year? Yeah, in 2020, he didn't no, go Bahrain to Bahrain. No, Bahrain was it, because he didn't COVID. go to Sakir, but he went to Bahrain, didn't he? Is it? Was that was right when they do like the two iterations, right? Yeah, so the Adam was correct. It was Bahrain, because the next race he missed out was a secure uh, Grand Prix, the secure. shortened version yeah. of Bahrain, where George Russell Ta-da. went into his They were seat. milking that season with all the COVID cancellations. They couldn't accept yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every races. Track races. got like two races. Austria got two, Silverstone got two. It was too many. Um, yeah, that was okay. really silly. <laughs> we had Next time we get a 2021, let's do it without that too. I think that they had that too, right? Austria and Spielberg, even in the good season. Yeah. That's, that's silly. And then they had the robots giving the trophies out. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm back in. Come back in. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, next question, guys. So we know Lewis Hamilton has the most wins out of all time in Formula One with 104 wins. Let's try and round out the top five list. Who else is on that top five list and how many wins do they have? Do we? There's one obvious answer. Top five. Top five most wins of all time. I think uh, Verstappen's on it, but he's like five. Like he's not that high, right? Okay, so Rezepin's no, on there, and four. he is... I think I've got an answer, but Abdi put his hand up, so I'm going to let him answer, uh, and then I'm going to, like... I don't know the amount of race up. wins, but I'm guessing Michael Schumacher? <laughs> there you go. Why is he the one to answer the obvious one? Yes, Michael Schumacher. Oh, I literally said Abdi... Shumi oh, right away. He said Shumi, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't oh. hear either of you say that. <laughs> yeah. So Schumacher, right, well... 91. Verstappen will be around 58 or something, I'm guessing. Alain Prost is 54. And then... Hmm. Okay, what, so Schumacher is number something? two. That's correct. Uh, where is Verstappen on the list? Verstappen oh, I think is like ahead he's five. of Prost. Because I think I saw yeah. a graphic. No, on he's ahead of Prost. Sure. He'll be ahead of Prost. It'll be Prost. Oh, no. yeah, actually. He's third right. on the list with 61 yeah, Verstappen's wins. Verstappen's third. 30 wins away from Schumacher, which yeah, and then honestly, it'll be Vettel and Prost. So that means he just so passed Vettel because Vettel yeah. used to be third. And so yeah. who is in fourth? So now it's Vettel. He'll be yeah. at 54. Yeah. Vettel, Vettel's in fourth Three. with uh, 53 wins. And then that puts in fifth place, you guys, we Prost. said it before, yeah. Alan Prost. Yeah. Alan Prost at 51 wins. Do you guys want to do the next five just for fun and giggles? Yeah, yeah. sure. So probably sign our next, right? Because yeah, that's correct. they were quite yeah. close. 41 wins. Who's in seventh? Is it Fernando? Or seven, 32. eight, nine, ten. Seven is... Fernando, correct, yeah. Fernando with 32 wins, uh, chasing that 33rd for all Now it gets time. really tough because it's like Eight, there nine, were so many yeah. really fewer races. Hakkinen is not on the list. Mansell. Mansell is number eight. Good job, Barfa. Yes, and he has a total nice. of 31 wins, which is really close to Fernando, actually. Yeah, I, I forgot he had a dominant car one year because Nigel wasn't like that amazing. Yeah, 92. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then two more people. After Mansell. Yep. It's going to be one of the Scots. I, I just know. can't decide which one. Is it Jackie or Jim? Coulthard. That's good, yeah. It's Jackie Stewart Jim is the Clark. next one on the list. Oh, Jackie Stewart. And Jim Clark comes in at number 10. For bonus points, Jim Clark is tied with somebody for 10th most wins. Who do you think Jim Clark is tied with? <sighs> is it from that era? No. Uh, yes. Ish. No, he comes Ish? a little bit later. He comes, Louda. He's gonna, Louda. He's Louda. Gonna start. <laughs> nice. Good. Wow, Look at the dweebs buzzing in at the same time. 1960, 1960 and 1984. That's basically the same time. Yeah, no, when he listen, said later, I was no, like, no, no, oh, no, no, you no. Know listen, because Jim Clark raced from 1960 to 68, and Nicky Lauda started racing in 71. 68 and 71 are very close to each other. Hmm. I'm just saying. Interesting. But, oh, yeah, wow. that was good. That was, uh, that was fun. Adam and Arfa really using big brain time to get the top people in there. That's uh, 
Nice. Hey, that was awesome. Uh, um, okay, Should we get so into the race? I've got more questions. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to have more of my chocolate. Okay. So Lewis Hamilton has uh, the uh, the record for most pole positions in a, in a debut season and most wins in a debut season. Easy question for you guys, I guess. What was his first pole position? Canada. Yeah, that's correct. And do you know where his first victory was? Canada. Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Last question, and then our friend can we can talk about the race, and then our friend can go sleep. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> so Lewis Hamilton has the record, which is not often talked about. Him and one other driver being on the first row of the grid the most times in history. For like context, number three is Alan Prost and Ayrton Senna. Number one and two are Lewis Hamilton and somebody else, and so is number four is Lewis Hamilton with somebody else. Who is he on the on the front row with the most amount of times? Not that he bought us. No, that's Rosberg. Four. I'm guessing Verstappen, maybe. Verstappen is uh, five. No, he's eighteen. That's eighteenth most. But Adam did say it, it's Nico Rosberg. Lewis Hamilton has been on the front row with Nico Rosberg a record forty four times. No, I said it. Yeah, I, you I told you I'd win. Uh, but yes, that's 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 uh, the correct. And then in second, uh, it's Lewis Hamilton and Seb for the most front row starts. Yeah. And then after that, that's it's beautiful. Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. And then down in 18 is Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, who have shared the front row 14 times, incredibly. There's, yeah, there's the been some revisionist exaggeration about how good of a qualifier Valtteri was. Hmm. hmm. Um, I was just going to say, for context, me and Sonia work together, and I can see her looking at me being like, every time I've asked you a question at work, where <laughs> where was this memory power then? And it's because I've decided not to remember anything that I need for work. Well, I just remember random well. F1 trivia. All right, F1 trivia person over. Let's talk about <laughs> Lewis Hamilton winning. Uh, if I, you want to take it away? Yeah, so uh, our race kind of had a few phases. There was waiting for the rain. Uh, and then it starts to rain, and the best thing ever happened when Lewis got ahead of uh, George Russell, mm -hmm. which is my happiest moment, because I was like, even if McLaren's end up winning, um, as long as Lewis is ahead of George, I'm happy. And then George Russell's hydraulics failed because he filled them with his tears, um, <laughs> and he had to retire. So that was fun. I like that Crofty and was then... like, he's the only one here having issues for not enough water or something like that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's very yeah. yeah, uh, sad. And then it got dry again. And uh, as it got dry, Leclerc was still on wet tires and lost like 25 seconds or something. And then more rain came. Um, and McLaren decided to mess up all their pit stops. Uh, and then as it got dry again, Lewis went on to soft because he didn't have any other options. Lando had like some board meeting that took four hours. Like Lando's some entire thing about trying to pick a tire. It just it felt he's going to be general like, internal medicine then for like, sure. Yeah, trying to make a decision in the NHS was Lando Norris, and then he picked the wrong tire and he should have won, but he didn't. And then Verstappen, who was struggling the whole race, suddenly for the last bit woke up. Do you think Verstappen gets really upset when it rains and it just goes off into yeah. a mood? And then when it was sunny, he was like, "I'm I'm back. I'm here." Um, no, I just think the car is yeah. messed up now. I'm happy. So <laughs> you guys happy. are going to love this. Thing. Here's an experience from Cop's Corner. Yeah. I've got to tell you about this. So George gets passed rapidly in the rain. And I'm sitting next to an Englishman. That this time, on this day, it was a guy clad in McLaren gear. And so I turned to him at this point and I was like, oh, I thought you told me earlier that you're just happy if any Brit wins. And he's like, nah, mate, nobody likes George. Not even George likes George. <laughs> it's beautiful. Amazing. Very true. Amazing. Nice. Um, Sonia, what was electing the McLarens and did you think they were going to win? They were fast. So fast. Even watching them in FP1 on Friday morning, they were so quick. And I just did not think like visibly anyone else could match their pace that that Friday Saturday so so quick so I think it was pure strategy I think they just, I don't know what was going on because they should have like you say they should have just won that race I don't know why they brought Piastri in like a lap later than everybody else and they didn't just 
double stack that pit. Yeah. I don't know what was going they on. They thought they would lose more time, but that it just goes to show that McLaren is not used to fighting at the front yet. They'll, they'll no. get better yeah. at these war tactics, I suppose. Yeah, this was they're like very out of practice. Yeah, this was something we talked about in 2021 where I was like, I don't think Mercedes knew how to chase. They only knew how to lead from the top. I think McLaren only knows how to chase. Do you worry yeah. something? Okay. <laughs> no, I agree. Uh, I, I don't know if we have me. like a specific structure. We're going to talk about this later, but we should talk about whether whether Norris bottled it or whether his team did. And I think that's a complex discussion. Uh, both. But Abdi, is... um, Abdi um, yes. all young people I see nowadays uh, are walking around the shops and whatever wearing McLaren gear. Is it the same for you as our representative young person? Yes. Explain to me why all young people like McLaren. I do not know why. In fact, I ask people and they say, and I'm like, do you know what shirt you're wearing? And then I get to put Claren shirt. And I'm like, okay, name one driver on the McLaren team. And then he's like, uh, uh, I don't know, a Dutch guy, is he on McLaren? That That's what all of them say. Is that Dutch guy on McLaren? Nice. I think so it's they've gone and purchased people. an orange shirt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's irresistible. Some people actually say Edward Norris or Oscar Piastri or something like that. But like half the people I asked are just like that Dutch guy. That Dutch guy. Okay, I'm gonna be him. I'm gonna be incensed for you guys, even though I'm not a Mercedes supporter. I'm a big Arafat Muhammad supporter, so I really kind of osmosed a lot of this. <laughs> the fact that Lando Norris's merch is also chartreuse should be illegal. That's Lewis's color. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, the, and, you can and see his, his like, hats, design and I was like, oh, similar. is that 44? Oh, it's four. Like, yeah, exactly. Come on. Yeah. And that exactly. should be like Pantone. I mean, like, you know how the minion yellow is now like a Pantone copyright? There should be like a yeah. Lewis shirt yeah. you can't use. Yeah. No, I agree. Because, yeah. like, uh, Abdi's shirt is the new design for this year, and Lando has a very similar yeah. design, and it's very it's confusing to watch. So. It's frustrating. But Arfred, I don't know why so many people like McLaren. It doesn't make sense to me. Oscar Piastri is as plain as white bread, and Lando Norris is a bad Oscar Piastri is amazing. Oscar Piastri is so funny. Okay, but why does he look like some kid I would, like, bully to get their grades at school? Like, Why are you bullying people? <laughs> why are you um, bullying people? I'm bullying Oscar Your parents Piastri. made lunch for you every day. They That's... moved from India. They worked so hard so you could have all three meals. <laughs> Why are you taking other people's food? Oscar Piastri's parents <laughs> made my lunch every single day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know. I think Piastri's great. Just some rounding thoughts from Adam about the race and what it was like to watch it live. Yeah, I mean, the race was incredible. Like I say, like there was so much passing. So constantly I didn't know what was going to come coming to my dynamic corner. I, I didn't expect it was going to be that good. I felt obliged to choose cops because that's where our Lord and Savior crashed for our sins as a Red Bull <laughs> fan. But, you know, I didn't expect it to be so thrilling to be there specifically. <laughs> and, uh, it's the best corner. It's one of the best it's corners so in the world. Awesome. It's so awesome. And it's so fun because you can all see a scene and go down maggots and beckets and winding the mm -hmm. next bit. So it's a beautiful foreshortening as you take the pick. But what an exciting race. I mean, I went through a roller coaster of emotions. So first of all, I'm 100% convinced now that Max is going to be Seb and stall at four championships because we were screwed. I think losing Adrian has killed us. My conspiracy theory, I'm now going to say Adrian is feeding us bad information on purpose. He's back on the pit wall, and I bet he's just saying, yeah, just put a put a, like a zigzag in the floor. I don't know. It came to me in a vision. I just I can't, I can't understand why we're getting worse and worse and worse, but... Again, you know, as a fan of the team, generally, like I don't usually pick a specific driver. It's kind of like my team. I love my Honda. I love my Hannah. When Max was catching on hards, like, first of all, what a master stroke. Is anybody else on hards? Did anybody even try it? No. Really, really chasing Lewis work. to the end, just like it was Silverstone 2020, hunting yeah, Lewis down in the last few laps. Yeah. But, yeah, the ending. You know, I don't know if you're walling off a section or if I can just talk about it, but. Just talk. I, like, haven't loved Lewis's persona, like, generally. You know, I, obviously I'm supporting a different team, but when he's like, yeah, there's never been a driver like me, that's why. You know, of course I'm going to win after 300. Who cares if nobody else has? I, like, don't love that. But yeah. then this, obviously this period has been so humanizing for him. Uh, I don't think it's his image. I think it's genuine. 
that when he was like when he was sobbing on the radio and then he came out and then he hugged his dad was was good but when he hugged his mom like I just mm. like I choked me up like genuinely like I was like and I'm gonna lose it guys like it just was so sweet mm. he's just he's just like the rest of us you know it really is it was a beautiful moment uh, even seeing like the replays on the on the radio rewinds and stuff still gets me now yeah. Yeah. And maybe I'm still exhausted, you know, it's a long, long pilgrimage to, to Silverstein. But like, yeah, it was genuinely very special. And I can't, I can't believe that I lucked out because I thought that was George's race to lose and that we, you know, we might see Lando or Max push him a bit. But yeah. What so yeah, what were your thoughts? Go- what were the thoughts going through in your head as you watch Lewis in the last five, six laps? I think... Because we're so out of practice of watching him win, I almost didn't believe he was going to cross the checkered flag first. Um, and I think then seeing Max overtake Lando and seeing how much time he was shaving off each lap, I was like, I just want this race to end now. Like, it has to be lap 52 now, now, yeah. now. And I was just yeah. praying. I was crossing everything that I could. And it was it was truly like a heart-stopping moment because I just didn't think he was going to do it. Even though I love him and I know he's got the ability to, I just had this horrible feeling that it was all just going to go wrong for him. So when he went round club corner and we could see him sort of just about to approach that checkered flag, that moment, again, everything, I felt like the whole weekend was just slow motion for me, but I could feel the tears like pooling in my eyes. And I was like, do you know what? I'm not the only one. I could feel it in the people around me as well. It was wow. it was pure emotion, pure emotion. And then watching him do his lap with he, he stopped. And I think the steward gave him the Union Jack. Yeah. That was just like chef's kiss. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm with you. Uh, I, the last like four or five laps, I kept thinking like, oh my god, these laps are the longest laps of F1 I've watched ever. How are we still on 49? Oh my god, how are there still four laps? And I didn't think. I I just could not. Even though logically max wasn't catching fast enough to catch and overtake but yeah i, I didn't i just didn't um abdi what was going through your head i know you were watching the live timings uh yeah. just at the end there what was going through your head as yeah. you watch the last couple um laps? it was in general because we had to go somewhere it was in general very chaotic in the house so even with the race i was on the edge of the seat by the seat i mean like not even a, i mean like a bed and um, and when and when I saw the checkered flag right next to Lewis's name, I got extremely excited and extremely happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I didn't believe it was gonna happen because uh, there's just been so many races where he is leading and then something happens and someone overtakes him um, or the strategy goes wrong or he's right on the wrong tire. Uh, but I think when Lewis went on the radio and he said, "Leave it to me." That to me was just like, okay, he's he's got this. Um, he's locked in, and this is the Lewis Hamilton that we know. And and Adam, what you said about Max chasing them down on the hard, uh, I know our fight says it before. The rain brings up the uh, brings the cream to the top, and that was like, you know, you, who's gonna finish P one and P two, right? When it rains like that, it's gonna be the best drivers. Um, I'm half surprised Fernando Alonso wasn't in third because he I, he would be the one I'd expect. Yeah, to look yeah, me too. That's I was in I was Canada thinking. last year, and it was the three world champions chasing each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. So I, but I, I totally think Madison's too far gone. The hard was tough to make it work, um, just because of the whole context. But he gave it to Max, um, and he really nursed it through. Overtook Lando um, on. Yeah, I thought that was incredible. I don't know what Lando was thinking going out to mediums, but we'll talk about McLaren in a sec. Arafat, what was going through your head? So I was really nervous for the last couple of laps to the point where I didn't even want to watch. My kids were playing in the garden and I was like, I'm going to put the TV volume down. I'm just going to watch them running around. Because you know when people are like too nervous to watch penalties? I was like that. I was too yeah. nervous. And I felt like the laps were the longest thing. And then two laps before the end, when I'm way too stressed to even watch, my sister phones. Yeah. And she's on holiday in Spain. Yeah. And she's like, I can't see the race anywhere. You need to point the phone at your TV. <laughs> and I was like, God, you're forcing me to watch this and I'm too nervous. <laughs> and then she was like, I can't see the numbers. You need to read them out to me. And I was like, the gap is 3.3. The gap oh. is 3.2. The gap is. And I was like saying it out loud, counting it yeah. down. 
I got to 1.4 at the end and I was just like, this is the opposite of what I want to be doing right now. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it. She sent us a note, it. didn't she? She Did sent she? us a message. Yeah, play it. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch any of the race or I didn't get to watch most of the race. I listened on the radio, but the, the signal was patchy, so it was coming and going. So there seemed to be a lot of drama unfolding and I kept messaging you guys for the updates and um, all the overtakes and, and the re-overtakes and um, the pit stops and everything. I would catch like moments of them um, and it just built even more tra- drama for me. Um, I managed to get to the hotel a couple of laps from the end, but by that time, like, for some reason, the radio wasn't working. So I video called with Fat and he let me watch the last couple of laps on his his um, TV via video call. So I managed to see Lewis cross the line and it was absolutely incredible. can't believe it's been three years since he's won and it was great to see him back at the top. Um, you could just see the emotion from him and I've just been watching all of the Instagram, like all, all over social media. Um, it was great to see Lewis like posting again on social media like he, he used to back in I think the last time I'd seen him post about this was 2021. So that was really good. And yeah, it sounds like it was an epic race. And I can't wait to get home and watch it all again. She sounds so unwell. Anyway, (laughs) three things I want to talk about before we uh, finish off for tonight. So we've talked about all the happiness. I want to end by talking about the sadness. And by the sadness, uh, I mean, number one, Charles Leclerc, number two, yeah. Sergio Perez, and number three, Lando Norris. Anyone <laughs> want to start anywhere in particular? Did you say Adam, Piastri was I think was we should talk about Checo. Yeah. No, uh, Leclerc. But let's, Honestly, let's do Perez Checo, first. It is, it is tempting to just say what is there to say anymore. I guess what we can say is we now know the specifics of his performance clauses, apparently. So... This is not fun. Uh, you know, Checo, yeah, so the understanding, I think, is that he can't be more than 100 points behind Max, and he can't be more than five places behind Max in the standings. Whoa, so both on. of those Where are currently being failed. failed. Pardon me? Nico Hulkenberg has made more points in the last two races than Perez has made in, like, the last eight. Wow. So, wait, Max has 255 points. Sergio has 118 I can't do math, but Google can, and that's a 137-point difference. He's very close to that, and it would take yeah. one good race for Lewis to overtake George and Perez, and that puts him down to P6. And, uh, I think George so and Lewis like, will overtake him. Yeah. Like Maybe Mercedes guys. is the best car now, and like even when it hasn't been, they've been very good in Hungary, so maybe they're going to have another banger in a couple weeks. Yeah. There's a one-point gap between Lewis and George. So before I was thinking, wow, how will Lewis ever beat George in the points? Little did I know he was going to win. And now it's only a one-point yeah. difference. Yeah. DNFs do a lot. Maybe we're going to see Mercedes dominance again and Red Bull's going to only win in Hungary and Singapore, like the, the bizarro tracks. <laughs> so what I want from everybody, I think actually, I'll, we'll talk about it later, but I think Ferrari's going to be stronger in Hungary. Um there's rumors that Checo, if he doesn't meet his performance clauses, will be dropped by the summer break. You know, for right. the end of the year, the summer break. So which yeah, about driver to lose the is going to replace him? Yeah, they're going to lose the constructors because of him, and they're so desperate that they do- it's not even like they've got like their own Kimi they're Antonelli lose or the someone that they want to put in the car. <laughs> He's telling so them who, to put. So who does each person? <laughs> who does each person think is going to be in the Red Bull? Uh, after the summer break i think it'll be daniel but i wish it was yuki but i think yuki is the child of the uh the honda divorce and he's never going to get the call up because they're bitter about getting no more engines from them yeah why daniel and that surprises me a lot well who else is it going to be i I mean they're giving liam lawson a private test but i think it's probably to see if he's suited to v carb to minarby not to Although yeah. they kind of know he is already, so I suppose it could be that the private test or filming day test could be for an immediate promotion. Like, weirder things have happened, but I think they're probably burned from doing that with Pierre and, and Alex that they probably wouldn't promote a junior immediately ever again. So if they're yeah. saying, like, hey, we know Daniel's not amazing, he's actually remarkably inconsistent, but it can't get worse than this, 
we need somebody yeah. to finish with in, in the top five, top six for the rest of the year to keep the constructors. Probably he can do that. I think that's what they'd offer to him. They'd say, hey, you get to come back and be in the Red Bull, but at the end of the year, we want you to retire and just go away. I think he'd take it. Abdi, who do you think is, is going to get picked up? I think I'm with um, Adam. I think, honestly, Daniel Ricardo might get picked up because he's already in the Red Bull family. No, we've lost They're talking That's about... Okay. Sorry, um, who do you think? He's uh, already in the Red Bull family. Red Bull. And, oh, I um, agree. I think they probably need but, someone yeah. that's going to boost their points. They need experience. They need someone to just get in the car and drive it, really, don't they? Man, <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. None of you have said what I think it is, and I th- feel like we've all forgotten in season one, episode two, why do why else have Red Bull retained Alex Albon in their network oh. if not for a situation mm. like this? They yeah. made him not, wear though. the Red Bull AlphaTauri shirt it, in his Williams announcement. It was done very purposefully so that everybody knows but, we're loaning but him he to Williams. That. Did he they drop it? That. Like, you look, his, hel- his helmet... Phased out. He stopped having Red Bull Racing on his helmet, and he had Red Bull Thailand on his helmet, and now that's mm. been phased out as well. He's bit I, by bit quietly I broken think his ties. It's just quietly, but it's it's the card Red Bull has in their back pocket, and I think Alex Albon returns to Red Bull glorious, coming off his stint from Williams, and he finishes out the year there. You that's know who I, might still be on a contract in some technical sense? The man, the myth, the legend. Hendrik, Oxford. Johannes, Nicasius, De Vries. My God, I forgot about him. Uh, <laughs> his yeah, name is DeVries Hendrik. Is but yeah, Nick, Nick is like his third name. It's some it's some pure <laughs> yeah. Dutch, Dutch stuff. Uh, yeah, obviously, I I like him for really like no justifiable reason. His Beyond the Great interview was extremely cute, and that's just taken me yeah. forever. He is a big weirdo, <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, could you imagine what if Jos Verstappen just jumps in and he's like, "Listen, man." You're taking another Dutch person, or we're walking. <laughs> I'm sorry, we lost uh, you for a cool. second. You were saying yeah, you think I it's Dan Ricardo? What? You were saying you think it's Dan or Ricardo? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I don't know what happened. I didn't hear what you said before that too. But I think it's Daniel Ricardo and uh, and maybe Liam Lawson because yeah, like they were testing Liam Lawson. So yeah, but I think what they'll do, they'll take the Daniel. Example. They'll have Daniel secure the constructors. They'll gasly him off, that famous verb. Oh. And then and then they'll say, you know what? You keep for a year. And then we're kicking him out with the engine. I think he, he can stop saying year. slurs think, on the radio. I think Ricardo. Strict performance yeah, clause for no idea. more slurs. <laughs> but you can say the yeah. F word because that's Max's favorite word too. And we'll just be the F word team. I yeah. did hear from Christian Horner <laughs> that he doesn't think uh, Yuki Tsunoda's temperament could handle Max Verstappen. It's not yeah. a like crazy yeah. theory, you know. Yeah, I could definitely see him getting angry about being cut off or oh, expecting to it tow be him if or something. Like punch each other in the face. <laughs> I'd that watch that. Another <laughs> Verstappen Ocon moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm just so worried right. it's not going to matter, guys. I'm I'm so worried our team is done. Is Lando too sad? Okay. Yes, there's sure. always. Your team is done, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah, Your there's always a new Nui, Aston Martin, Honda, whatever seems Just to be coming a team. with the Ferrari pick, technical pick director Aston, that was announced yeah. today. Exactly. Speaking mm-hmm. of Ferrari, talk about sadness and our good friend from the past. Uh, sadness is good friend from the past, Charles Leclerc. Man was extremely We'll talk about both depressed. sad boys at once. Yeah, Char- yeah. Lando and, and Lando Charles, and sad Leclerc. hour. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part of Lando Norris is him giving his tearful like press conference. Like, yeah, I, I picked the wrong tire. I just seem to do better. Exactly. And then in the background is Brad Pitt <laughs> going to t- answer his interview yeah, question. Yeah, Brad Pitt was there. That was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Alonso turns around like just purely nonplussed. <laughs> Like, but then you then, they, then you found out later that Alonso filmed a secret scene. So how nonplussed can you be? Maybe he's just that good of an actor. I don't know, but I thought it was so funny that all these people are giving serious interviews, and in the background, 
Brad Pitt is acting. <laughs> like, yes, I, I'm also a driver. <laughs> and then you got Checo in the front being like, yeah, so uh, we didn't get enough immunohistochemistry you know, this day and we have to order it from another hospital. And uh, the tech, uh, he really screwed it up. <laughs> he just had a very disappointing prep. Uh, and now finally do a Leclerc. I can't do Leclerc. I need to. I'm actually hoping to call in my sister for. She's the even better accent person. Leclerc's yeah. French is so mysterious to me. I can't do it. Like I know he just starts with like he's like this. You have to say it's like this to start it, but like uh, I, I don't. I, don't I can't do the say. rest of it. <laughs> yeah, but it was so sad. He was just like I don't know what to say when I come here anymore. Yeah, I saw a meme. Where was that? It was like man who had lost all hope doesn't realize there was oh, some yeah, more the onion onion hope thing. to lose. <laughs> Leclerc yeah, and they photoshopped uh, what uh, Matt Gallagher onto it too, because he's like the biggest Charl booster. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it's brutal. Right, we've lost one yeah. guest already. He's done a Perez and been dropped halfway through. But <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say right. thank you to our other two guests. Anything you want to say before we go? Anything? You want yeah, to I want your own I'm, personal. The only thing I want to know is I want to know your opinions about: is it Lando's fault or is it his team's fault? Because like. These grandmasters are calling say, for the tires they need on their own, but I've even heard Lewis say, no, it shouldn't have to be that way. I should be able to trust my guys. Yeah, yeah I'd say 70% the team's fault. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. I think I think Lando's being too hard on himself, and he... Hmm. I don't know why he takes it all on. Maybe it's because he has he's yeah. friends with Max, so like he thinks his peer But like when they said to Max, Max, do you want hards or mediums? Max just went hard. Like, that was the whole conversation. It wasn't... Yeah. Let's and he boxed this. before anyone asked him to for enters. He's like, I feel it. Yeah. But with the only yeah. thing, I am Rush. I mean, from Lando's perspective, hmm. all that happened is he went onto the soft instead of the medium. Yeah. Whereas I know McLaren messed up Piastri's stop and threw away his rear gunner, and we did this whole other thing. But from Lando's perspective, I mean, that is his fault. He picked the wrong tire. And he did, but they yeah, misled but they him too. Him? They were like, "You want uh, you want soft nice. to race Lewis or medium to race Max? Like, what are you going to say? You want to win." Was such a weird thing to say. What were you saying, Sonia? Is that they shouldn't have given him an option. They should have said, "This is what we're doing." I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess giving him the options around. Who <laughs> reminded me of? <laughs> this is Charlotte. Charlotte again um, when they said was, it's going to rain. It and it last didn't. Monday, you know, this whole thing Sonia said that they shouldn't have given him an option. <laughs> last Monday, Sonia came into work. And uh, I was like, oh, I thought you were in clinic today. You should go down to clinic. And she went, no, I don't want to. And then just sat down. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I made my decision and I stuck by it. And I didn't have anyone yeah. trying to sway me. Yeah. No, you were very clear. But I didn't know how to react to that. <laughs> but I came in that morning with a strategy that I'm not going. I planned it. Yeah. From experience. You stuck to it I and it worked out it for you. Worked. So, yeah. Not a practice or a preach. He should have not been given an option. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I guess Lando with his track record should not be given strategy options in the future. I think I agree. I think that's the takeaway. There's I put it in our other group chat, but um if there's one thing I can always count on Lando Norris to do, it's make the wrong strategy decision. And he came through this time too. Especially so. in the rain. What yeah. do you think about it, Inter? I'll never forget that. <laughs> You'll never forget either. <laughs> yeah, that's You'll right. never forget. Uh, I just right. want to well, add thank you very much to our quick. guest. Oh, what, what now oh, yeah. what you just added? One, one quick thing. You never let me go add... to bed. No, but I'm really happy that this race was won on merit, whereas George's was won on pure, pure luck. Because yeah. it just makes it like, that much sweeter. There was a bit of luck involved. <laughs> you know, McLaren had to mess up. We needed the wet weather. I think in a pure dry race, Verstappen oh, yeah, versus McLaren both... would have been the more... Uh, we both benefited outcome, massively but... from McLaren screwing it up. I don't think either of our teams yeah. would have been on the top step. Mm. But I think... It was a deserved win. He made it yeah. work. This is right. changeable the conditions. The they just bring out the beasts, and then the two goats rolled up yeah. beside each other and waved. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm all about world all right, peace. I don't know if it would have ever that. happened if I hadn't met you guys, but... <laughs> <it's a beautiful laughs> thing. Shall we um, talk with our WhatsApp? So, yeah, the last yeah. thing is, uh, I was thinking, you know how at Eurovision they go around and they're like... It's, however many points for this country and however many points for that country. So I reached out to some of our listeners and fans and friends and I said, 
hey, let's make a one minute video from around the world um, of people giving 25 points to Lewis for his win today. So, Mohammed, why don't you hit play? And this is Australia. With 25 points for Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. The Intisinco Pontos para que Lewis Hamilton galing sa Filipinas. Hello, ngama na ko amashumi, amabini, anisitan for we have Lewis Hamilton up in South Africa. Bye. هذا هي خمسة وعشرين نقاطا للويس هاملتون مع محمد من الإمارات. Yaki, the Portugal, per Lewis Hamilton, win cinq points. Kug puncher is fitcher, attaché Lewis Hamilton on Sean Aaron. It's Singapore here and twenty five points to Lewis Hamilton. This is Canada and it's 25 points for Lewis Hamilton. Thank you everyone. That was our Lewis Hamilton extravaganza. Uh, we will see you all whenever the next race is in wherever the next place is because I already forgot. Thank you to our guests for joining Bye. us as well. Bye. Bye. Bye.